Let's pivot as well then to the, the stablecoin world, but also in the cryptocurrency space with Bitcoin. We all know it's been rising steadily this year. It's up more than 80 percent, past $30,000. There's that scuttlebutt about BlackRock uh, potentially knowing something that the rest of the market uh, did not and other rivals have also applied for this U.S. dollar spot ETF. You know, the SEC has given no indication that it's going to approve that. What, what are you hearing? And why is Bitcoin rising like this? Well, you know, I, I think just, you know, broadly, um, you know, these sort of di digital stores of value like Bitcoin uh, remain compelling as a hedge instrument uh, in the context of continued uh, persistent inflation and weakening currencies. And, you know, so the, there's some macro factors that I think are continue to be supportive there. In terms of, um, you know, regulatory approvals, things like, uh, you know, more mature uh, market structures that would support something like that, I, you know, I think progress is being made. You have mature spot markets. You have, um, you know, you have mature custody infrastructure that's well, well regulated. Yeah. Uh, you have good market surveillance. And so I think many of the things that have been concerns in the past are being addressed and suggest that you know, these kinds of products are, are more likely to be uh, approved for general investor access. Well, speaking of approval, you did get a license in Singapore for stablecoin there. What's your outlook for Asia? And are you seeing a shift to this part of the world as there is obviously and Hong Kong is also uh, you know, coming up with this regulatory framework by potentially next year for a stablecoin? Yeah, so, uh, you know, Asia is a huge area of focus for us. Uh, as noted, um, we were recent, we re recently received a major payment institution license in Singapore. That's going to allow us to more fully distribute USDC through, you know, in the region. Yeah. Um, we see enormous demand for digital dollars in emerging markets, uh, and, and Asia is really central to that. We're seeing, I think, very steady progress. Uh, obviously, the Singapore regulators have been, uh, you know, very much at the forefront of thinking about this. But Hong Kong uh, clearly uh, looking to establish itself as a very significant center for the digital asset markets and for stable coins. And uh, we're paying very close attention to that. Yeah. I mean, also Japan as well. Uh, they had their stable coin law become operative, I believe, June 1st. Mitsubishi UFJ Financial also talking about hooking up with partners, the established yes. partners in stablecoin. Are you in talks there in Japan? So I'll be in uh, Japan in a few days. Okay. Uh, and, and uh, you know, I think uh, we're very encouraged by really all around the world, every major market, stablecoin laws are coming into place. And I think what that signifies is that this kind of digital currency, these fiat-linked digital currencies, right are about to become a part of the mainstream global financial system. And are regulators and central banks also coming to grips with that? They right? are. I, I really think they are. And in fact, the lesson here is that private sector innovation in digital currency with fiat is happening much faster than public sector innovation in that space. And so uh, it's important. Central banks know this is happening. This is a new area of private sector innovation in the financial system. They need to regulate that. They'll cont continue to think about things like CBDCs, but really the focus is on the markets moving forward. They need to make sure that there's good rules around it. And I think that's it's a very encouraging for the commercial growth of the sector. So where in Asia will become the, the digital center hub, if you will? Is it Singapore? Is it going to be Hong Kong? Japan has very interesting developments that we just talked about. What we're seeing happen is that all of the major financial market centers in the world, whether it be you know Singapore, Hong Kong, Tokyo, you know increasingly UAE, uh, Paris, London, U.S., all of these markets are moving forward in parallel, yeah. and I think they're all looking to make sure that they've got sound frameworks around this. So I don't think it's one at the expense of the other. I think all of these serve different dimensions of the economic system. I think you've been in favor of more regulation as well, because especially following the collapse of the smaller banks, whether it's Silicon sure. Valley Bank, I think you had about a three and a three point three billion dollar exposure there, which you took a hit on the stable coin down to I think about eighty eight cents, which is supposed to be right essentially to one dollar. So so what kind of regulation must be the priority right now? The, the really key thing is, and we've been advocating for years for this, is a full reserve model where the assets can be a mixture of cash or overnight cash at central banks, uh, you know, uh, short duration uh, treasury bills or equivalent government yeah. uh, debt. And if you have that foundation as the asset base, and that's regulated and, and look, looked after by banking supervisors, you'll actually have the safest 
fiat digital instruments in the world. Uh, and so we're pushing for that, and that is increasingly, I think, what we're going to see around the world. I've been reading some of the speculation that following the SEC's crackdown on the likes of Binance and Coinbase, that stable coins could be the next one in the crosshairs. What potentially could happen if they go, if they overshoot on regulation? Well, I, I think if you look at, at a global level, the Financial Stability Board, you look at the, the way in which governments are looking at this, the uniform view around the world is that payment stable coins are really the domain of prudential supervisors, banking and payment supervisors. That seems to be the focus in the United States from the White House, the Fed, yeah. Treasury. Uh, now, there could be stable coins that behave yeah. in different ways, which might be subject to securities or commodities regulation. But clearly, these payment tokens that are operating as payment systems, clearly are not going to be subject to uh, SEC 